Good morning. Welcome to one and all on this Christ the King Sunday. We are happy to have uh, uh, Colin Burns from First Presbyterian in Greensboro as our guest organist today while Charles Hogan is away. All are welcome following this service to enjoy coffee and refreshments in our parlor. Please read carefully through all the printed announcements in your bulletin, but I would like to highlight a few things. Today uh, is the day that the uh, Episcopal Church women will be collecting frozen turkey to support uh, their Thanksgiving um, uh, drive for allied churches, and there is a receptacle in the bell tower where you can drop those donations off. Also, last Sunday we erroneously stated that all the foster children in need of toys for our annual toy drive had been covered. We do still have a few children left. Uh, parishioner Carrie Daniels uh, will be uh, at the back of the church uh, for anyone uh, willing to help out. Uh, also, uh, following this service today, we have an acolyte training. All acolytes are welcome to meet down the small dining room for lunch uh, and then uh, to come up here uh, to the church uh, for um, for the training. Next Sunday, amazingly enough, uh, the 29th of November is the first Sunday of Advent, and uh, beginning next Sunday at 7 p.m., we will be offering an Advent evening um, service of worship. It will be a service of evensong with the Eucharist, and we will be making full use of the flexible space uh, up in the auditorium There'll be a lot of creativity uh, to this service. I encourage you to attend. Uh, those attending uh, will meet first in the parlor for an orientation to what you'll experience uh, uh, up in the auditorium. Finally, uh, I'm happy to note uh, that the Holy Comforter Community Play School was recognized with the annual Bishop's Medal Award by Bishop Ann Hodges Koppel uh, yesterday at the 200th Convention of the Diocese of North Carolina in Winston-Salem. Our school shared the award with two other parish-based bilingual schools serving preschoolers uh, in the diocese. Uh, thank you so much to all those uh, in the parish uh, who've worked to make this school reality, and please do keep this important ministry in your prayers. With that, let us enter into a time of worship together. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from 2 Samuel. These are the last words of David. The oracle of David, son of Jesse, the oracle of the man whom God exalted, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the favorite of the strong one of Israel. The spirit of the Lord speaks through me. His word is upon my tongue. The God of Israel has spoken. The rock of Israel has said to me, one who rules over people justly, ruling in the fear of God, is like the light of the morning, like the sun rising on a cloudless morning, gleaming from the rain on the grassy land. It is not my house like this with God, for he has made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and secure. Will he not cause to prosper all my help and my desire? But the godless are all like thorns that are thrown away, for they cannot be picked up with the hand. To touch them, one uses an iron bar or the shaft of a spear, and they are entirely consumed in fire on the spot. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able and join me in singing hymn number 382. there any children who'd like to participate in our children's sermon time, they're welcome to follow our volunteers out the side door after the proclamation of the gospel. The holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again and, and again summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ.
In the name of the God who loves us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. Today is the last Sunday of the Christian calendar, the last Sunday before we begin anew with the season of Advent. A Sunday, as I mentioned in announcements, that is now known as the Feast of Christ the King. A Sunday in which we are invited to reflect upon Jesus Christ, as our colic puts it, as the King of kings and Lord of lords. And just what it might mean to be brought under his most gracious rule. To reflect upon what we mean each week when we claim that Jesus lives and reigns as a part of the Holy Trinity with God the Father and God the Spirit forever and ever. And it is good to set aside time to reflect upon this because Holy Scripture is full of imagery depicting God as a king sitting upon his celestial throne, such as in our passage this morning from Revelation. But for us 21st century Americans who have no real association with a monarchy, aside from perhaps a casual fascination with the British royal family, sorting out what this commitment means to us to proclaim Christ as our king can be hard to imagine. That said, what certainly seems like a key to understanding Christ as king is the realization that to say Jesus is king means that nobody and nothing else can be. Which is hard in and of itself because there are of course plenty of things competing for kingship over our lives such as money, success, prestige, or power. But the timeliest example might just be anxiety. As the writer Diana Butler Bass recently wrote, I have become convinced that a large percentage of Americans, Christians included, are addicted to anxiety. Anxiety has made its claim for kingship over our lives by attempting to make fear our number one motivator. For everywhere we turn, everywhere we turn, our anxiety is being used as motivation to buy, to vote, and in some cases even to hate. We Americans, statistically speaking, are increasingly anxious about many things, including a scarcity of economic opportunity, loss of meaning and purpose, the spread of disease, global terrorism, and now the burgeoning refugee crisis, and the 24-7 cycle of news, the constant tug for many of social media, and the increased polarization this all creates doesn't help, leaving many of us feeling depressed, isolated, and as though the world is out of control. I hear that a lot lately. Folks crying out in dismay, saying, what kind of world are we living in? What kind of world are we living in? It's enough to tie us all up in knots, to make us not even want to walk outside of our own homes, let alone welcome outsiders in. And we try to cope with this incessant anxiety, this fear, in a variety of ways. We drink too much, we overeat, we incessantly check in on the news, check in on our digital devices, or we indulge in any number of other addictive behaviors. We turn to medication, we close ourselves off, we put up walls, we carry weapons, we go to war, all in the hopes of trying to maintain some sense of control some sense of safety and security amidst the chaos and unpredictability around us. And these anxieties, these fears are very real. They're very real. And in many cases, we have every reason to take action to protect ourselves. It's human nature to want to do that. But you know, none of these measures completely solve our problems. None of these measures really 
quiet down the anxiety and the fear that we feel. None of them keep the darkness at bay. In my experience, they actually often end up exacerbating them. Into all of this comes Jesus, our King. Jesus, whose message to us in the Gospels is most often to fear not. Jesus, who remains loving, compassionate, and open-hearted, even while being betrayed, beaten, and given over to death. Who remains just as loving, compassionate, and open-hearted as he hung, dying on the cross. Who says of those crucifying him in that dark and fearful moment, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. It all seems so crazy. It certainly seemed that way to Pontius Pilate, who ultimately cast judgment on Jesus, and to most of the disciples who ultimately run for their lives for fear of suffering a similar fate. An allegiance to Jesus and to the example he gives us has seemed just as crazy to many since then, down through the centuries. It has seemed just as crazy in the eyes of many to obediently follow the same loving, compassionate, and open-hearted path in the face of the ways of this world. In the face of violence, betrayal, and terror. In the face of disappointment, illness, and death. Which is ultimately what I believe presiding Bishop Curry is getting at when he encourages us to be crazy Christians. And when he tells us that he believes the world needs more crazy Christians. For I believe that he is telling us that the world needs more men, women, and children courageous enough to be crazy like Jesus, to live like Jesus, to love like Jesus, to forgive like Jesus, amidst times and circumstances when to do so will be thought downright crazy by many. The world needs more of us Jesus followers, willing to proclaim our faith in Christ our King amidst a world rife with anxiety and fear, and to work by the grace of God to live under his most gracious rule and not under the rules of this world, and to believe that with Jesus as our King, with Jesus as our King, we can live differently than others do. Not anxiety free. Not free from fear and terror. But not controlled by it either. As a friend and colleague recently wrote, if Jesus is our king, then anxiety cannot be. If Jesus is our king, then we must live under the rules of his kingdom. And that means we have to love our neighbors and our enemies. If Jesus is our king, we must learn to obey him when he enters the depths of our anxiety and says, have no fear. If Jesus is our king, we must be like Jesus' followers in this morning's gospel reading from John who don't stand up and fight, but followers who reach out in care and compassion for the least, the lost, and yes, even those who would do us harm because that's what the kingdom of God looks like. Jesus never promised it was going to be easy, but he promised he would be with us even to the end of the age. We have every reason to be afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of a lot of things. But as Christians, we mustn't allow our fears to deter us from following the way of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our true and eternal King. The hard truth is that we are never truly safe in this life. None of us, whether we live in Burlington or Beirut, Lebanon or Paris, France. But if we as Christians take seriously our professed belief in the resurrection, if we believe Jesus when he tells us that he is with us, then we are called to live not in fear but in courage. And here's what the Gospels tell us that courage looks like. Courage as Jesus puts it in Matthew's gospel, means giving food, clothing, and shelter 
to the stranger and the outcast. Even if he or she looks different than us, prays to a different God, or speaks a foreign language. Courage is deciding that compassion is more important than our perception of our own safety. Courage is taking the dangerous, unpopular, and yes, reckless path toward the cross. Because that's where Christ leads us. My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus tells Pilate in our gospel reading today. My kingdom is not of this world. May we who claim Jesus is our king be crazy enough to follow where he leads by living our lives in, but not of, this broken and weary world of ours for the sake of God and of God's kingdom in the world. In the name of the God who loves us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand as we affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed as found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And to Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, for it seeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Our service continues with the prayers of the people, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray this morning for the Diocese of Wangaratta in Victoria, Australia. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Mary's House and the ministry to Greensboro-based colleges and universities, the UNC Chapel Hill campus ministry, and the Winston-Salem Episcopal ministry. We also pray for Burlington, Masjid, and Life Journey United Church of Christ. In our own parish, we pray for all our acolytes and give thanks for our acolyte coordinator, Jeff Groves. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop, 
Anne and Peter, our bishops, and Hector, the bishop of our companion diocese, and for all bishops, priests, pastors, and deacons. We pray for a just and generous response to the global migration crisis and for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We pray today for Robert Murray and all people involved in conflict and war, and for all others who have requested our prayers. Walt Morse, Les Plum, Jean Hogan, Diane Redding, Laura Scow, the family of Rick Tavenet, John Rice, Elton Brame, Linda and Bob Cater, Pat Boyd, Jamie Adams, Mildred Nowell, Ruth Wright, Arlene and Joe Vikes, Jan and Steve Davis, David Alexander, all refugees escaping war-torn areas of the world, all residents of rehabilitation and assisted living facilities and their caregivers, and anyone else you wish to name, either silently or aloud. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. And we pray for all those who have died, especially Elsie France, friend of Bill Amidon and Mary Ann Shanahan, Rick Tavenant, friend of Nancy Christensen, and anyone you wish to name, either silently or aloud. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share Let us pray now for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, amen. Please be seated. As we officially close out our pledge campaign uh, today, uh, we have one more stewardship reflection from uh, some of our youth and youth mentors. I'd like to invite them forward at this time.
Good morning, church family. Representing Holy Comforter's youth this morning are Eliza Segetti, uh, Anna and Michael Steed. Chuck Baird will also share a few thoughts. I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your generations of generosity, especially displayed toward our youth, the hope of our future. Thanks to your tremendous generosity, our youth have had successful fundraisers activities such as uh, to enable them to participate in mission activities such as Glory Ridge and Costa Rica. We pray that we can continue to depend upon you all to meet Holy Comforter's goal of 100% participation. Now we'll hear, now you're in for a real treat because now you get to listen to our, our youth representing uh, Anna and uh, Michael are representing all our youth here. Hello, I'm Anna Steed. I'm 12 years old, and I have been attending Holy Comforter for 12 years. Um, to the world, you are but one person, but to one person, you may be the world, anonymous. This quote reminded me, really made me think that your acts of generosity, they may seem small and significant, but they can really make a difference. Your act of generosity might inspire someone else to be generous too. And their act of generosity might inspire yet another person to be generous. And it sets off a whole chain reaction. And you never know what great things that your generosity may accomplish. Your contribution affects every person in this congregation. It might be an adult who helps at Newland or a youth who enjoys our Sunday school program. But you can be sure that your, that your generosity, no matter how small, will help our parish be the wonderful church that we know and love. And it will definitely help us reach our goal of 100% participation. In my many years as a youth at Holy Comforter, I never really truly appreciated how much the members of this parish do for the youth. That all changed when we started planning to go to Costa Rica on our mission trip. I was honestly, I was astounded by the amount of participation and the extent of the generosity we enjoyed every time we hosted a fundraiser. The giving spirit of this church is what enables the youth and our leaders to go experience such amazing activities and learning opportunities as our trip to Costa Rica. Working with the kids at the Escuela and their amazing teachers was really an eye-opening experience for all of us and something, and something that I hope all kids growing up with Holy Comforter can enjoy. Your generosity is what keeps this going and what makes this youth experience at Holy Comforter such a wonderful thing. Hola, buenos dias. Hello, good morning. I too want to thank everybody for supporting us for the two years prior going to Costa Rica with all our fundraising. And it turned out to be a very meaningful, fulfilling, gratifying experience for all of us. It really didn't take long at all, especially for our teenagers, to um, bond with the young students that we had um, and vice versa. It was hard for us all to leave by the end of the week. And we felt like we did our part for uh, a little less polarization in this world. And um, we came back wiser. And I've been impressed in the last couple of years that I was an EYC leader of the intelligence, compassion, creativity of our students. Uh, youth here. They just really kept me up my toes in a very good way and uh, I think the future for our youth is really hopeful here at Holy Comforter. Thank you. Now would you all please stand. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. We now continue our worship with the offering of our gifts. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Gracious and loving God, giver of all that is good and true and beautiful and life-giving, these pledge cards represent our sweat, they represent our lives, they represent our dreams. The pledges which we make on them are but tokens of the awesome gifts that we have been given, that have been given to us, and they are pledged in thanksgiving for all we have received, for all we have been inspired to be, for all we are challenged to become in this place. May they be the first fruits of all we have and not what we have left over, so that we may live out as closely as possible how you give to us. May we see them as our offering to you, sacred, holy, yet earthly, filled with possibilities. May we hold this image in our hearts and minds, so as we watch our offerings each week come to your table, we can see our very selves being a part of this offering. For it is us on the table, living sacrifices to you. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he'd given thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for all of us, the people of God. This is God's table, and all are welcome here. Turning to page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.